वो भगवान की स्वरूप शक्ति है लाली और संगीत की सार है वो समझ जाती है कि ये प्रैक्टिस प्रॉपर्टी भोग में जा कैसा है या शुद्ध और निष्ठा बढ़ा सकता है तब भक्ति के लिए ये देवी है मैं सोचे जैसे आज ही कोई भाव है वो सर्व शक्ति की वृत्ति है वो सब कुछ जानती है तब तक हमारे अंदर जाएंगी नहीं तो नहीं आएगी ये कथा भी क्या है वही कथा भी सर्व शक्ति की वृत्ति लादनी और संगीत का सार है तब तो वो कथा के माध्यम से भी यहाँ पर पहुंचेगी अन्यथा नहीं पहुंचेगी बस ऊपर से रिक्रिएशन हो रहा है धन धन भगवान के प्रचूर में लाखों कोटि रुपये भी आ जाएंगे प्रेम धन नहीं मिले इसलिए वो फल दिख रहे हैं सब कुछ छोड़ आश्रम का भी आज दो बात है आज जैसे वो बात आज गई तक नहीं छक्का बनाया गोविंद लो माँ हो वो आंखों से आंसू दी और आंसू की तो है जब ऐसे कोई कृष्ण को पुकार तो क्या होगा जैसे गोपियों ने तन है पर देख रास्ता के अंदर ध्यान कृष्ण कीर्तन के माध्यम में ही आएंगे और वो भी ऐसा गोपियों जैसा कीर्तन कृष्ण के लिए ही हो सुनकर के रूप नहीं है जरूर कृष्ण को आना पड़ेगा मत भक्त जस्त्र गायन की प्रतिष्ठा क्या हमारे भक्त लोग कीर्तन करते हैं एक बात को और समझ में आई आज एक आदमी ने पाप किया अपने पति को जान से मार किसी औरत ने भ्रूण हत्या किया भ्रूण हत्या समझते हैं पेट में बच्चा है और उसकी भी एक आदमी अपने नियत दियत को भी हत्या जो पाप नहीं है वो सब कुछ पाप किया है भगवान के नामाभा से ये दूर हो जाएगा कि नहीं ये जो पाप है शुद्ध नाम की जरूरत नहीं एक नामाभास के द्वारा ही दूर हो सकता है और शुद्ध नाम हो और वैष्णव की हरी कथा हो तो तब बात ही क्या इसलिए अजामिल का देखो उसमें विष्णु को दुर्गो ने कहा तुमने जो पाप किया इसने जो पाप किया धर्म के ठीकेदारों ये क्या होने लग गया भाई कपड़ा खींच रहा है कोई कौन है देखिए तो क्या कर रहा था अरे धर्म के ठीकादारों तू कहता है इसने सब पाप किया किंतु तुमको पता नहीं ऐसा जगत में कोई भी पाप नहीं है जो भगवान का नाम ग्रहण करते और वो समूह को पाप दूर न हो जाए जरूर निश्चित रूप से हो जाएगा इसलिए इसने पाप को किया था किंतु इसने अपने बेटे के नाम से स्मरण करके नारायण नाम चाहिए यह नाम आभास हो इसलिए सब पाप दूर हो गए हैं कोई भी अब पाप नहीं है चित्त इसका निर्माण हो गया है इसलिए तुम उन लोग इसको जन्म कोई नहीं मिल रहा इस बात का जिसको वैष्णव के सुनने से वैष्णव के मुख से सुनने से और इस भागवत की कथा में जिसको विश्वास नहीं है वो कैसा आदमी है बताओ तो वैष्णव के निकट और भागवत के निकट अपराधी हो जाएगा इसलिए इस चीज को समझो एक नाम के आभा से जितने भी पाप है वो सब तो दूर हो गए हैं इसको याद रखो फिर उसके लिए अनुताप करने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है इस चीज को खोखल और नहीं होता है तो अब फिर वहां अपराध होगा उसके बाद दुर्गति होगी और जो भगवान की ऐसी मधुर मधुर क्रिया कथाओं को सुन रहा है जो आजाम से कोटिपूर्ण 
कितना उस फल विक्रेणी का कितना शो भाग है अब फल जो उठा कृष्ण के हाथों में थे मीठे मीठे कृष्ण दिखला दे मीठे मीठे आम पीले पीले कोई लाल कोई अमरूद अंगूर इत्यादि जो फल थे उनके हाथों में था तो उन्होंने देखा कि हाथ में तो आ नहीं गए ऐसे ले गए विश्व ब्रह्मांड जी के लोग उसमें आज वो मांग कर मांग रहे हैं और हाथों में ले रहे हैं फल भी कहने का लेकर के और उसके तरफ में देखा देशी जीवन से आपके पैसे लौट गए और दौड़ते 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 मैया की गोली में आ गए मैया की गोली में भैया आई कहां से ले आया और वहां पर और दो महल्ले की जो सब बैठी थी एक एक फल लेकर के भैया वहां पर जितनी भी महिलाएं जो बैठी आई थी सबको देने पर भी वो जैसा का तैसा बना रहा एक दिन फल था और इतना मीठा इतना सुगंधित जो कृष्ण उससे लेकर के और उस फल को अपने चक दिया हो अपने ग्रहण कर दिया वो कैसा होगा समझो इसके बाद में मैया कहने लगी सबको और उधर में क्या हुआ उस फल दिख रहने का कृष्ण तो उसका चित्त ले लिया क्या है दुपूर चौगम प्रदेशम नवनीत चौगम गोपान लगानौगम
निमज जनतम अक्षर अपने लोगों को ब्रिजवासियों को इस प्रकार से ऐसी ऐसी मधुर लीलाओं में उसको भी समझ लो जब ब्रिजवासी भी थी कोई संबंध नहीं तो भी देखो आज ये गोपियों को कृष्ण से संबंध है हमारे प्रियतम है ऐसा ज्ञान है उनको क्या करते हैं उन्हें कैसी कैसी चीजें उस समय ये छोटी छोटी गोपियां कहा थी कहा थी राधा विशाखा कभी उल्लेख नहीं उल्लेख कब से होगा जबकि गोवर्धन उठाएंगे तब से इसके पहले अभी नहीं उससे उल्लेख होगा उस समय में उनमें पहले आएगा और मिलने से पहले पूर्व बड़ा उनका वर्णन करें अभी ऐसे ही नहीं आओ का वर्णन कर रहे हैं अभी पढ़ता बोलो So in this third verse of the Abhidhastaka, it is written, Swagoshan nimajantam akyabhyantam. So now the meaning of Goshan. Krishna, he's proclaiming that there is no one in all the world so dear to me as the Gops and Gopis of Vrindavan. And he's proclaiming this to who? To those whose hearts are filled with knowledge of Krishna's opulence. He's telling them, no one is so dear to me as the bridge bastards. And such pastimes, they're not possible to, uh, it is not possible for such pastimes to take place anywhere, only in bread. And no one, also he's proclaiming, no one is so fortunate as Nanda Baba Yashoda Maya, Upananda and his uh, wife and other bridge bastards. So, <coughs> Gurudev began to narrate there that once there was one fruit seller lady from Mathura, Falvikrini, and she had heard that Nanda Maharaj has one child, and this son is very, very beautiful, and she'd heard so much about the beauty of the son of Nanda Maharaj. So she had some greed, a greed came in her heart to see him. So one day, she took her basket of fruits with many nice uh, yellow fruits and mangoes, and grapes and bananas, and she put it on her head and she crossed over the Jamuna from Mathura and she came into Gokul. When she came there, she came in the vicinity of the house of Nanda Maharaj and she was moving around that area and calling out, oh, please take fruits, take fruits. Mangoes, you can take mangoes, bananas from me, very sweet and juicy, very tasteful. She was calling out like this. Why? Because if inside the house the children hear this, then they'll say to them, Oh mother, mother, go ahead and bring me some fruit. <coughs> so, but she'd come there to see Krishna. So, as she was thinking, more, gradually, gradually, as she was thinking more and more about Krishna, then she forgot why she, why she, what she was saying. Oh, take fruits, take fruits. She began to say instead of follow, follow, oh, go with the law, go with the law, Krishna law. And she was calling out the name and she'd forgotten everything. We would give the example we see here in Braj. The bridge basket they can take. One a pot on the head, one pot, two pot, three pot, several expert, and even they don't have to use their hands to hold. So she was not holding the basket of fruits, only she forgot everything and chanting the name of Krishna. And she was very absorbed. But after wondering very long time, then her heart was broken. So, oh, Krishna, he won't give me his darshan today? And she became uh, very uh, sad. And she left and she returned to her home. So then the next day she thought, now I will go there. And if Krishna, he doesn't give me darshan, I'll give up my life. I won't come back. So Gurudev was using the phrase, do or die. She had this mood, this very strong determination. I must see Krishna at all costs. So the sadhak, he should be like this. He should be ready to abandon everything in order to attain his aim and objective. 
So, Srila Gurudev was saying, comparing the, the determination of the public training to uh, devotees who come to the dham, but how? Oh, with so much money in their pockets. And they don't uh, give donations and distribute to the Vaishnavas. And they're keeping all their money in their pocket and they're thinking, I will use this for my own uh, happiness, my own sense gratification. And they come and then quite uh, duplicious. They're, so such persons, their um, character, it can never be uh, changed. They can never be rectified. Just like the tail of a dog. If you try it again and again and again to make the tail of a dog straight, but then when you let go, immediately it springs back and becomes crooked again. So Gurudev is saying, we should not be like this. We should be like the fruit seller coming to Vrindavan and ready to give up all our own personal considerations, all comforts and all aspirations for enjoyment and try to abandon everything and come completely in the Anugatya under the guidance of Guru and Vaishnavas. This is actually the fruit of hearing. So Gurudev is mentioning the example given by Pujapad Srila Bhaktivinoda Trivikram Maharaj. He said that Sanatana Goswami he left his home, his wealth, family, and everything. And even when he'd given up everything, then he even also, there was one servant who was serving him. He even gave up his servant. And Bharat Maharaj, also the example of Bharat Maharaj is in Srimad Bhagavatam. Even in his young age, he left his uh, vast kingdom and vast wealth as if it was stool. So, we will have to give up everything and make a very strong vow like the fruit seller if we want that this Harikata will enter into our heart. Why? Because Harikata is no ordinary thing. This Harikata is the manifestation of the essence of Sambit Shakti and the Dini Shakti, transcendental potency. So only those who abandoning everything and being very determined uh, and giving up all duplicity this Qatar, it will enter into their heart, not into the heart of everyone. So the Falk Victorini, she had made a vow to do or die. And forgetting everything, she again came in the vicinity of the house of Nanda Maharaj. And she was crying, Hey Govinda, Hey Krishna. So Gurudev is mentioning, if one will be absorbed and leaving everything and chanting Krishna's name with tears coming from the eyes, then what will be the result of this? What will Krishna do? So there is the example of during the time of Ras Lila, when Krishna left the Ras, what did the gopis do? They assembled together on the back of Jamuna and they began to do kirtan. And that kirtan, the influence was such that Krishna was unable to check himself and he again appeared amongst them. So, it's written in Purans also, Naham Tishtami Vaikunte, Yogi Nam Rideshuva. Krishna is saying, I am, where am I? You will not find me in Vaikunta. You will not find me in the hearts of the yogis. Where will you find me? In that place where my devotees are doing kirtan. I must go there. So, Gurudev is saying, this is the uh, power of kirtan and the power of Harinam. There are so many very vicious and simple activities like abortion, killing the baby, unborn babies in the womb and uh, intoxication and so many varieties of simple activities but all such very atrocious crimes the reactions for these activities can be immediately washed away by what? Only by Nam Abbas only by the semblance of Hari Nam The Nam Abbas destroys all sins there is no need, uh, it is not necessary to chant Shuranam to get rid of all of these things. The chanting of the pure name. Only the semblance of the name destroys all of these things. So Srila Gurudev was citing the example of Ajamil. When the Yamadutas, they came to take Ajamil away, the Vishnu Dutas came and, and stopped the Yamadutas. So the Yamadutas said, this person is very sinful. He's performed all kinds of very atrocious activities. But the Vishnu Duda said, no, he has no sinful reactions whatsoever. All of his sins have been cleansed away. Why? Because he gave his son the name Narayan. 
and again and again he was <coughs> chanting and remembering his name, Naraya, Naraya, Naraya. So he became completely cleansed of all sinful activities. So Srila Gurudev Guru Guru also told, Brahma is also told. Those who are chanting men, all they have then done all kinds of price chitta. No need of doing all this. They have done to all things, they have done all things. So Shri is mentioning it. Kapil Dev has told his mother, Aho Pata Swapata Togayan. That's even those who are uh, in the very low caste and the dog eating caste, then if they chant the name of Krishna, then what is the result of that? It is to be considered that they don't have to do any other atonements, that they've visited all the holy places, that they have uh, performed all kinds of sadhan, bhajan, and all kinds of austerities, and that they've completed their studies of the Vedas. So this nam is extremely powerful. And Srila Gurudev was commenting that if this Namabhas can destroy all kinds of sins, then what will be the result of hearing this sweet harikatwa of Krishna's pastimes in Braj from the lips of a pure Vaishnav? What will be the result? It is quite incomparable. We cannot even compare the chanting of Namabhas to hearing harikatwa, the sweet pastimes of Krishna, such as this Dhamma Lila from the lips of a, a pure Vaishnav. What will be the effect of hearing this? So those who have no faith in hearing this Harikata, oh, then they are great offenders. This is a great offense. They are most the lowest of all. So then Srila Gurudev continued how the Father Krani was singing and completely absorbed in Krishna Nam. And she sat down and she was chanting, chanting and crying with her heart melting. So at that time, Krishna, he was inside the house and he was playing in the grain silo. There was a very large stock of wheat there. And Krishna at this time, he was about two and a half years old. So he'd seen how his parents would barter with grains. So he took some grains in his hands, in his very tiny hands. And he came outside. So Falvik Rani, she didn't dare to come inside the compound of the house of Nanda Maharaj. Why? Because she was from, from a somewhat lower caste. So she did not dare to come outside. But Krishna being inside, when he heard her calling, Oh, come and take very sweet and juicy fruits. Then some water came on his tongue. And he picked up the grains and he went outside and came. And he was standing in front of the fruit cell. And she saw him. How did he look? Oh, very, very sweet. So charming. His mother had tied his hair on his head and put the peacock feather in his hair. And he was decorated nicely and chanted on his body. Very, very uh, uh, enchanting in his appearance. So Krishna came before, before her and was holding out his hands. Oh, please give me fruits, give me fruits. So when she saw him, oh, she was, her heart was completely stolen away by his astonishing beauty. Who is Krishna? He is the essence of all uh, lavanya, all lustre, of all things beautiful, all combined together, the essence of that, that is in Krishna. Krishna is that absolute truth who is established by all of the aphorisms of Vedanta. And he is the hero of all universes. And now he was standing before Vikrani and saying, Give me food, give me food. So when she saw him, oh, she forgot everything. She became almost unconscious seeing him. So she was unconscious and just absorbed in the beauty of Krishna. And Krishna said, Oh, please give me food, give me food. So she came in sense. And she said, Okay, I can give you food, but on one condition. You should sit in my lap and you should call me mother. So then when Krishna heard this, he thought, oh, how can I do this? This is very difficult. It's a very difficult thing for me to do. Because Yashoda is my mother, how can I call her mother? And she is 
so much lower caste also. So Krishna was afraid anyone might see him. So then Krishna, he was looking left and right to make sure that no one was watching. And quickly, he jumped into the lap of the uh, fruit seller and said, Oh mother, give me fruit. And then immediately he jumped up and then stood in front of her again. Oh, give me fruit, give me fruit. <laughs> so, how fortunate is this fruit seller that Krishna came in, in her lap and called her, Oh mother, Oh mother. So then Krishna, he was looking at the fruits that he particularly wanted and he was pointing them out, Oh, you give me this mango and this banana and this one and this one and this one. And so the fruit seller began to, she could not put it in his hands because his hands were so full, small. So holding his arms like this, she began to load up his arms with as many fruits as she could. So then when Krishna's arms were full of fruits, then he looked, looked at her with a very crooked side long glance and then he went returning to the house. So then when Krishna came into the house, his mother said, oh, where did you get all these fruits from? And she was taking the fruits and Yashodamaya, she began herself to personally distribute the fruits to all of Krishna's friends. And many sakas were coming. And it didn't matter how many friends were coming. She was distributing the fruits. They were, they were never finished. There was no shortage. And when they began to taste those fruits, oh, what was the taste like? Undescribable, unprecedented, so sweet. So Mother Yashoda, she distributed these fruits to, to all. And outside, what happened to the fruit seller? Oh, she was sitting there. And Krishna, he had stolen her heart. Because Krishna is a great thief. So one Vaishnav Kavi has written, Praje Prasidham Anapanita Chauram Gopangananam Chadukula Chauram Aneka Janmarita Papa Chauram Chaura Gaganyam Purasham Namami I give my pranam to the foremost of all thieves. Rajay Pasidam Navanita Chora. He's very famous in Braj as a butter thief. And Gopanganam Cha Dukul Chora. He's stolen the Dukul of the Gopis. So Dukul means the, the cost of the Gopis. Because we know when the Braja Gopis, they were doing Katiani Braj. On the last day they took bath in Jamuna and they left their cloth on the bank of Jamuna and Krishna came there and stole their dukkha, their cloth. But Krishna, but Srila Gurudev here is giving another comment. There's a, there's a further meaning of the word dukkha. Dukkha means do to cool, two dynasties. Krishna is stealing the gopis from the dynasty of their father and from the dynasty of their husband, taking them away. So it's called Gopanganam Cha Dukkha Chura. So Krishna is a great thief and he'd stolen the heart of the fruit seller and now she became become completely mad and the, she was sitting there until the evening and the evening came and then when evening came she took her empty basket and she put it upon her head and she began moving in the direction of Jamuna, of golden towards of Krishna. So as she approached the bank of Jamuna then she felt that the basket on her head which was originally empty, was now very heavy. So she's thinking, how did it become so heavy? So she took the basket down from her head and she looked inside. And what was there? Oh, great invaluable wealth. So many jewels, pearls, diamonds. Unimaginable wealth was there in the basket. So what did she give to Krishna? Only a few fruits. And what did Krishna give? Oh, invaluable wealth. But upon seeing this, then she felt that these jewels they have no value. Why? Because she was maddened in separation from Krishna. She was feeling very, very high separation from Krishna. So she just took the basket and she threw all the jewels into the river. And she just began chanting, Krishna Nam, absorbing the rain. And she never returned to Mathurati's home. Never returned. Where she went? So, she did not return to Mathura. No one can understand where she went. She became mad and wandering in Gopal. Who can say where she went? But we can understand that by Krishna's cause of mercy, that she went to Golok Vrindavan. And there, this very day, she is there now, like a mother of Krishna in Vrindavan, and always drinking the nectar of Krishna's beauty. So, this is the result of having Krishna's darshan. 
of seeing Krishna one time. This is the result of hearing Hari Kata. If one will see Krishna once, or hear Hari Kata, that person can never return to their home. Guru said, we come and we have darshan, or we hear Hari Kata. But what is that darshan? It's quite bogus. Because afterwards we see, and then we go home. <laughs> but if one will actually take darshan of Krishna, well, then he will never leave Vrindavan. So, in this way, Krishna is drowning the inhabitants of Gokul in the pools of ecstasy.
মাটিতে লুচি পুটি পড়ে আর এই যে চারটা মত জন্মস্থ শীতি এ তোমার প্রমাণ এই চারটা মত যদি কারোর একসঙ্গে ছুটে যায় বাবা তার হয়তো তার কি হবে বলে দেখি
I think that first day are hearing so painful, awful, very kind of Krishna. I think that you have but recovered in a day. Don't think that we have limited so much money. Nothing you have done. You cannot pay anything for here in India. So we are all dead to worship. All this. You should not think that we are here. All four thousand rupees we have. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So all four thousand rupees. And so pitiful, pitiful. Again, you see that. He told one thing. You should try to remember this. He told that if we are in collective way, Guru Vaishnav all are here. And we are observing this car. Here in so high class of powerful and space powerful people. If anyone thinks that, oh, nothing to gain in this collective place, I should chant one like name separately. And I should do parikrama of Govardhan. Why not? Gandhavati, why type one like this? In, in, in so many days. And I will take with Bhav for this. हम लोग प्रतिज्ञा करके नियम अनुसार से ये कर रहे हैं कि अकेले कर रहा है और हम लोग एक कलाकृत रूप में ये कर रहे हैं कोटी कोटी जन्मों में अकेला करके कुछ नहीं कर सकता क्या लाख को कर इसका उदाहरण हम दिखला रहे हैं at the time of our birth there was this I do not do that or God brought young man and we used to do Parikrama with our Guru Dev. Here in this street part, very awesome. And taking Prasad, I will be back in this class. He saw that, oh, they are not doing actually Niyam Shiva. They are taking rice, dal, chapati, and some day festival, oh, sweet rice and all. And they don't stop. Oh, I should go alone. Go Govardhan and Chalagya. Alone. And he used to chant one like Harinam Devi. And do Parikrama. With how? Dalmati Parikrama. He used to. He neglected Guru Maharaj and all this society. And he used to stop only taking something very little. After that, he thought, thought that I am successful in this. My doing this is successful. They are doing nothing. Or oh, Guruji also not falling. The principle of all this. What happened? What happened? जैसे ये ठीक नहीं है, रिक्शा मांगना ये ठीक नहीं, हम रिक्शा चलाएंगे पहले ही, किंतु अपने जीवन को पार्टन करके हर काम करेंगे और गोवर्धन की परिक्रमा करेंगे और भजन करेंगे और एक लाख परिणाम करेंगे। बैंकें की ही बहुत ये रिक्शा, that I should maintain myself. Not begging and not like this. So he bought a rickshaw and he began to pull it here and there, chanting them, but his name was reduced. After some time, a desire to marry came, but he was black, no money. So a black fish lady, Christ married, and he pulled so much 
Reksha and collected some money and gave to her. Teeth was like this. Very ugly. He offered himself in that lady lotus feet. And then went, left Vrindavan. Vrindavan left. And then he began to take fish, eggs and everything. And name was Khan, totally. And where is Govardhan Parikrama, where is one life and where is all the things? So you should try to realize all these things. Vaishnava ka sangha chhoda karke, aur guru ka sangha chhoda karke, hari naam karenge aur niyam seva karenge, unka phal bhi vai sahi seva. Aisa dhu ko samjho. Is liye Vaishnava ke sangha me suno. Aur upan mein baith karke suno. I will sit there. Not in counting of Vaishnava, in the eyes of Vaishnava, I will be upside. <laughs> this will ruin them. So try to realize this past and come here in the front of Vaishnava, in the eyes, in there. Be operated, they will operate all these things back. He has done so many things. I go take one thing. Very easy. So try to realize all these things. Be remain situated in the association of Vaishnava. Don't be alone and try to chant and to, to take Niyam Seva alone. It will, it can save you. Never, never and never. Yaki Raksha nahi kar sakta. Jain yaan se jain ke, kuch din karin ke, aur phir vahi chala. Sehi bhaga hai. इधर बैसों के इस समय खाओ पियो कंठ तक खाओ और क्या करो आगंतु प्रसाद सेवा करिया बैसों के खाओ पियो और अपन का भजन करो सामूहिक रूप में इसी को किया है यहाँ पर गुरु बैठे बैठा है बैसों बैठे हैं और उसको चढ़कर के अकेले में नियम सेवा करेंगे भाई इसे प्राप्त Try to realize all these things. Try to be in the eyes of Vaishnava. They can say. Otherwise, they cannot say it all. Go, Brahma. Hindi. At, at, at 11 or 10, you should go on the house of Mahesh and Nabi and all other things. You should try to do kirtan there, and at 11, I may come here. After that, take no shasha. Then, oh, at 4, you should again come. Very powerful, like the thousand meter. I'm very sorry that I cannot make it all. I know that from Venezuela, uh, Brazil, from America, from Latin America, Hawaii. Russia, Australia, Philippines, and all the devotees have come and they want to make me to get there. I want to get there and to discuss also. So, you can meet and we can discuss something, but it is very 